What's up gamers, it's your boy Josiah Rep here, and today we're ranking each and every book of the Bible from worst to best. Listen, 2 Timothy says that all scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. But I'm here to tell you today that they are not all equally useful for teaching and those other things. Some are better and some are worse, and this is the only definitive list of which ones are which. Let's begin. Numbers. You probably expected Leviticus, didn't you? For some reason, that's the book of the Torah that people hate on the most. But here's the thing, sacrificial law is plot important. That's the stuff that Jesus fulfilled by being the ultimate sacrifice. Numbers is just a bunch of census data. Why is it in my Bible? Leviticus. It's still pretty bad. Not the worst, but still pretty bad. Deuteronomy. Better than Leviticus. Not by much. Okay, speed round so we can get out of the really dry ones a bit faster. 1 Chronicles, Ezra, 1 Kings, 2 Kings, Nahum, 2 John, 3 John, Nehemiah, James, and 2 Chronicles. Sometimes the sequel is that many books better than the original. Jeremiah is just depressing. Most of it is predicting Israel's exile in Babylon, and like, that's most of the prophets, but IMO this one is especially not fun to read. Speaking of downers, Lamentations is just a bunch of psalms, but they're sad. Listen, I don't read the Bible to be sad. I thought God was going to solve all my problems for me. I shouldn't have to feel sad when I read God's book. Hebrews! We don't even know who wrote Hebrews, dude! If an author can't be bothered to write his name on his book, he's clearly not competent enough to be writing scripture. First Peter. I haven't read either of Peter's books, but, like, have you read the Gospels? Peter's kinda dumb. I don't want to read something he wrote. Same with Second Peter. Ruth is a bit of a weird story, and I think people like to apply it in ways that are questionable. Like, I've heard sermons that say Boaz redeeming Ruth is sort of a metaphor for how Jesus redeems us, and that's fine, that's good, that's cool. Uh, but like, I've also heard youth pastors tell young girls to be like Ruth, and ladies, don't be like Ruth. This girl heckin' decided she wanted to marry this guy, so she sneaks in on him while he's sleeping, lays down at his feet, waits for him to wake up, and then explains to him that he is financially responsible for her now. Ladies, this is not how you find a man. Don't do that. It's weird. Don't do that. <laughs> Hosea, similar issue. Ephesians, look. Paul wrote a lot of letters. One of those letters has to be the worst one. Not far better is 1 Thessalonians. It's skippable. Paul basically had to re-clarify everything he said in this book when he wrote the second Thessalonians. Why even bother? Paul's letter to the Philippines. Uh, Bob, what are the Philippines? The Philippines are a group of islands off the coast of Southeast Asia, but that's not important now. Revelation. People don't read this book for its actual spiritual value, which does exist. They read it because they want to read about antichrists and dragons and crap. I don't think Jesus wanted us to focus on how the world was going to end. That said, we're definitely out of the low tiers and into the mid tiers. Genesis. Abraham is a bad protagonist. Mark is the worst gospel. It's just Matthew lights. Judges is just the same story over and over and over again. Like we get it, the Israelites constantly betray God and then he has to let them be taken over by another group of people and then a judge comes and delivers the people. Also Samson eats honey out of a dead lion. That's the whole book. Proverbs, overrated. Second Samuel. You ever read a book and it has like this super likable character that you kind of look up to and want to relate to? Well, 2 Samuel is the sequel to that book where you find out that that guy grew old, became king, and then became a real jerk. Gotta catch him up, fight on! Ezekiel is just kind of a weird guy. He has some good stuff to say, but he says it in weird ways and no one listens to him and that's the whole book. 2 Thessalonians is basically a more practical version of Revelation. It has fewer dragons, but also more spiritual application. I don't know how to rank Psalm. I also don't know how to rank 1 John. Joel doesn't make any sense if you haven't read a bunch of the other books of the Bibles. Alright, speed round of prophets I don't have strong feelings about one way or the other. 
Amos, Isaiah, Micah, Obadiah, Daniel, Zechariah, Haggai, Matthew. He's not a prophet, so his speed round is over. Galatians. I don't have much to say about the Paul books. I, I just don't. What do you want me to say? The fruits of the spirit are silly concepts. No, I just... I don't know. Hack. Heck. Yeah, how do you... Habak. Habakkuk. Habakkuk is how you say that. Uh, Job is an incredibly long and way too wordy book. I love the story it's trying to tell, but I hate actually reading it. Acts. This book kind of jumps around a lot. It's more historical than having any real point or focus to it. Um, so I can't justify putting it any higher than this, but there's also nothing really wrong with it. We're now into the high tiers. Malachi is a high tier book because it is meta. The whole book is about how the Israelites are still stubborn and corrupt as ever, and it ends with a story that's basically about the importance of scripture. First Samuel, this book is the rise and fall of King Saul. It's basically a Game of Thrones for Christians good book. Luke, if Mark is Matthew Light, then this book is Matthew Ultimate Edition. It's everything Mark had, everything Matthew had, plus a bunch of extra stuff like the Christmas story. Good gospel. Hey Jude. Joshua, as a kid I always found this book to be incredibly encouraging. Uh, does using my personal experience as my reasoning make the list biased? No, of course not. This list is 100% absolute objective fact. <clears throat> Zephaniah also speaks to me personally because this book was written in the time of good king Josiah, whom I was named after. It literally speaks to me personally. Nice. 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, Titus, Colossians. Look, I just, I don't have any jokes about Paul's epistles. They're just kind of things I believe written by a guy who wrote a lot of letters. There's nothing for me to make fun of here. Romans, I would put this higher, but like it's such a basic choice. Like everyone loves Romans. It's not even a hot take to say that it's the best of Paul's epistles. It just, it just is. It, no one's gonna argue with that. Not even a hot take. Nothing interesting for me to say, let's move on. Exodus. From both a literary and spiritual standpoint, I think Exodus is far and away the best of the Pentateuch. The good moments in the other ones are hidden next to chapters of genealogies and sacrificial and dietary laws. Meanwhile, Exodus is 100% just solid stuff. There's a reason that two of the most influential movies ever made were both based off of this book. It is a great story. Jonah was a prophet, ooh ooh, but it really never got it. Sabatron. Song of Solomon, for obvious reasons. Alright, these are the top three. These are books I recommend people should read. It, like, even if you're not a Christian, like, read these books. Oh heck, I forgot to script after this point. Uh, Esther. It is a story of two very flawed protagonists working against a very evil yet also fleshed out antagonist. It is a great book. Once again, it inspired two great movies. It's also thought by some literary scholars to be the inspiration for the frame story in 1001 Nights, which is obviously one of the greatest works of literature ever put to paper. Ecclesiastes is basically where the Bible gets super philosophical, and it's basically combating the idea that life has no meaning. It's it's very deep. It's something worth thinking about. Like, if Proverbs is a guy who's smarter than you condescending down to you, Ecclesiastes is him talking to you as if you're on his level, as if you really understand stuff. Uh, you will feel smarter if you read this. <laughs> And finally, the best book in the Bible is also the best gospel. It is the Gospel of John. John basically wrote this book because he read the other three gospels and was like, guys, you left out the best parts. And let me tell you, they did. It is 100% the book of the Bible that I get tired of reading the least. And you should also read it and never get tired of reading it. Otherwise, you are a bad Christian. I said it. That's right, if you don't 
if you don't read this book, you're a bad Christian. That's not the case for the other books of the Bible that I get tired of reading, but it is for this one. Um, that is the objective truth, uh, and you can't argue with me. If you do, I will block you. Uh, thanks for watching. Goodbye. Hey, Jude. Don't make it bad. Take a sad song and make it better. Remember to let it into your heart.